This video talks about fetal circulation. So let's take a quick look at what the fetal circulation looks like. So imagine that this is the placenta and we are having two kinds of blood supplies coming and going from the placenta. One is the oxygenated blood, the other is the deoxygenated blood. Okay. Now the oxygenated blood is actually carried by a vein. Yes, you heard me right. It's actually carried by a vein and it's called the umbilical vein. This is carrying the oxygenated blood from the placenta onto the fe fetus. The other one is called the umbilical artery, which will take deoxygenated blood back to the placenta and onto the mother. Now we are going to follow the pathway like this. We're going to start off with the umbilical vein, go all the way to the heart, back from the heart, and back onto the umbilical vein, umbilical artery. So this should be artery. Now, the umbilical vein is later converted to ductus venosus. About 50% of the oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein ends up in the ductus venosus. So let's make it a little bit simpler. So let's say this is our umbilical vein. which is going to give off some branches here and there, finally forming the ductus venosus, which later on gives its, all its blood supply, about 50% of its blood supply, 50% of the blood supply that is carried by the umbilical vein onto the ductus venosus because we lose some here and there onto the inferior vena cava. Now, the inferior vena cava now, imagine this is the inferior vena cava, is going to come to the heart. So the inferior vena cava is going to enter the right atrium. There, this is not the only source of blood supply to the inferior vena cava. There is the superior vena cava and then there is the pulmonary artery. So inferior vena cava is actually bringing oxygenated blood onto the heart and we have our foraminal valley right here. Now blood is dumped onto the superior vena cava from the upper part of the body and these, this is going to be deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood is going to enter the right atrium, follow the pathway move on to the left side of the heart. Some deoxygenated blood is also spilled onto the ductus arteriosus. Now this is our pulmonary artery, this is our pulmonary vein, and this is our ductus arteriosus. Now the ductus arteriosus is going to spill some deoxygenated blood onto the right side of the heart. Now let's take a quick recap because this picture got a little messy. So let's go back to this picture which summarizes pretty much everything that I said so far. So we are going to have blood coming from the oxygenated blood coming from the placenta through the umbilical vein followed by ductus venosus which is going to enter the inferior vena cava. This is all oxygenated blood and which enters the uh, right atrium. Deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava, which is coming from the upper part of the body, is also going to enter the right atrium. Deoxygenated blood from the other parts of the body is going to travel to the ductus arteriosus, which is right here, onto the right atrium. All this blood is going to shuttle through the foraminal valley onto the left side of the heart. Now this blood then finds its way out through the aorta onto the umbilical artery which now has only deoxygenated blood and back to the placenta 
which I showed here. Now we are going to have the deoxygenated blood entering the placenta and back onto the placenta and the deoxygenated blood is going to go back to the mother. So that is an overall mechanism. Now at birth what happens is the resistant the, re the resistance in the lungs is going to decrease because the fetus is going to take a huge breath and the and the left atrial pressure is going to increase a lot more than the right atrial pressure so all this pressure is going to put more pressure onto the foramen ovale closing the foramen ovale so that's what's happened that's what happens in birth so again at birth the child is going to take a huge breath so increase in breath that is going to uh, increase left atrial pressure more than right atrial pressure which is going to seal the deal close foramen ovale now what's going to happen to our ductus arteriosus the ductus arteriosus is going to be converted to ligamentum arteriosum or if it's if it's not closed then that's when we call it pated ductus arteriosus ductus venosus is then going to it's going to be called to, because if this is called ligamentum arteriosum this is going to be called ligamentum venosum makes sense right umbilical vein, umbilical vein is going to be called ligamentum teres hepatis umbilical vein is going to be called ligamentum teres hepatis and umbilical artery is going to be called medial umbilical ligaments medial medial with an l at the end medial umbilical li ligament because of course you know there is the median umbilical ligament so all those can get a little confu confusing so the umbilical artery is going to form medial umbilical ligament foramen ovale is now going to be called fossa ovalis so i guess that's all for fetal circulation